When you become indifferent to injustice, that's a problem of Iman, that's a problem of faith. And you look at the Prophet Wasallam and the way that he would react when he saw someone being wronged. And he had such a hatred for oppression Wasallam, And that was because the Prophet Wasallam loved what Allah loved and the Prophet Wasallam hated what Allah hated. And Allah Azzawajal hates oppression and has made it forbidden between us. So what would it be like when the Prophet Wasallam saw you being wronged or saw you wronging someone else in his presence? The ahadith in this regard are actually too many to account for. And this was, of course, how Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one of the descriptions to Inu ala nawab al-haq. You support everyone that has a righteous cause. You're there for people in every way that they need you to be there. So if that means money, then you give them money. If that means help, then you give them help. If that means emotional support, you give them emotional support. And if that means when they are being wronged and they find no one to advocate on their behalf, you are the one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will stand up for them. And that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before Islam. So how about after he came into the divine realization? Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, he reports a narration about himself. And it's not a pleasant narration about himself. And I want to preface this with that for the reason that sometimes these people would share these things about themselves to teach a lesson to the ummah and to share with you what your messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was like and the lessons that they learned from him. So Abu Mas'ud is actually the wrongdoer in this narration that he himself narrates. He says that I had a slave of mine that I was beating and I was in a fit of rage as I was beating him. And as I was whipping him and whipping him and whipping him, I heard a man say, Aba Mas'ud, Aba Mas'ud, Aba Mas'ud. He was shouting my name. And he said, Lam afham salt min al ghadab. I could not recognize the voice because of the rage that I was in. I'lam ya Aba Mas'ud. No, O Aba Mas'ud. No, O Aba Mas'ud. Until I realized that was the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I wasn't used to hearing his voice that way. So Abu Mas'ud said, I looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I saw his anger when he was calling out to me, No, O Abu Mas'ud. And he said, I dropped the whip. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to me in a strong voice, he says, Allahu aqdaru alayka minka ala hadha al-ghulam. Allah is more powerful. Allah has more authority over you than you have over this young man. Allah could do to you in a far more capable manner than what you could do to this man. And Abu Mas'ud was shocked by the anger of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was standing up for that young man. SubhanAllah, you find this in almost every situation and things that are very, very close to us. A woman who comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in a narration from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to plead about the way that she was being mistreated. Now, Al-Mujadila, Allah revealed a whole surah about a woman who came to plead to the Prophet Sallallahu about being in a difficult state. This was a woman that came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she was concealing her identity and she says to the Prophet ﷺ that my husband is beating me. The Prophet ﷺ says, tell him you are under the protection of the Messenger of Allah. I mean, what a guarantee, right? Go back to him and tell him you are under my protection. She came back and she says that he hit me again, Ya Rasulullah. And again, she doesn't want to reveal her identity. That's the implication of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ takes a piece of his shirt and he gives her a piece of his shirt as proof. Go back to him and tell him that you are under the protection of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are under the protection of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she goes back to her husband with a piece of the shirt of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she comes back and she says, Ya Rasulullah, he hit me again. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raises his hands to the sky and he starts to make dua, he starts to pray against her husband. SubhanAllah, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took this so Seriously, he didn't say, well, I can't help you anymore. No, the Prophet Sallallahu took it so seriously that he actually started to make dua against the man because he continued to oppress her even after he sent his own garment, a piece of his own garment with her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by the way, this was amazing that the Prophet Sallallahu 
would even hear the complaints of animals, things that you did not know would speak. There was a time that you had a bird that was flapping its wings and that was hovering over the Sahaba. And this was in a time of an expedition. So there are more serious things at hand, right? There are things that you have to cater to as the leader of an army right now. There is so much that's going on. And this bird is hovering over the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. And the Prophet ﷺ looks to the bird and then he looks to the Sahaba and he says, Man faja'a Who has hurt this one in regards to her child? Who has hurt this one in regards to her child? SubhanAllah, if you didn't know that it was a bird, you would think he's talking about a human being SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that's how outraged the Prophet SallAllahu was. That's how he felt. Who hurt this one in regards to her child? And one of the Sahaba mentioned that he took her baby from the nest and the Prophet SallAllahu insisted that you return the eggs back to her nest so that she doesn't feel that distress anymore. You find another narration SubhanAllah also with an animal, Sahar ibn Amr. He says that the Prophet passed by a camel and that camel's stomach touched its back, meaning it had such little food that you could see its stomach touching its back. There was no weight on it. And the Prophet went to the camel and the Prophet started to comfort the camel. And he said, fear Allah in regards to these animals that don't speak. You ride them while they're in good health. You eat them while they're in good health. You should feed them while they're in good health. Take care of these animals, right? The Prophet said that this camel is complaining to me. So you find that the Prophet does not ignore the call of the oppressed even if no one else hears that call but him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and even if others hear the call but they don't think that the call is significant enough to answer no call of the one that was wrong was ever insignificant to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even if everybody else ignored it sallu alayhi sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam